let us maybe uh, start. I will just uh, play no role in this interview. This interview is the affair of Solène and Nolwenn. I just say a few words for you to be a little bit more informed about the framework of this interview and uh, uh, the background. So in a few words, first, thank you for having, having accepted kindly to spend some time with our uh, friends from two very highly reputed uh, business schools in France, namely ESSEC and ESCP, probably no one from ESCP and uh, uh, Solen from ESSEC will say a few words uh, to explain uh, their school and what they are doing right now. But both are uh, engaged, committed in a student association called NOISE, which could be translated as New Observatory for Social and Environmental uh, uh, Innovation. And so very much committed, but we will explain that to you. So the idea of this okay. interview is to, to ask you a few questions, but much more in the style of uh, five-side conversation. So maybe you could be interrupted or if you could uh, make relatively short answers. Uh, and uh, this interview will be broadcasted to the campus of both schools, not only in Paris, but also in other countries at the occasion of some meetings with the students or conferences. Is it okay for you? Or can we start now? That's and fine. I will That's, be, yeah, sure. I, I, will be on mute. I will disappear from the screen. I will disappear from the microphone. The play now, the game uh, is for uh, Nolwen and so on. Maybe Solen first or Nolwen? Yes, I'll start. Please okay. go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Jean-Luc. Uh, so, good afternoon, Professor uh, Yunus. Good, uh, good, good morning, Solène. Good yeah. morning, uh, uh, Jean-Luc. And uh, welcome, everyone. Um, so, my name is Nolan Magdalene. I'm the president of the Noise ESCP. Uh, it's an ecological and social um, association, student association. Um, and it is a real uh, pleasure and great honor to be here online with you, Professor. Uh, for a brief and inspiring Q&A. Uh, so to introduce you briefly, uh, if we still need to do that, uh, you are a Bangladeshi um, economist and entrepreneur, Nobel Peace Prize for, and I quote, for your efforts through, uh, through microcredit to create economic and development from below. You are also a pioneer in social business and microcredit. And so uh, therefore, thank you. And uh, welcome, professor. S professor, thank you for giving us this time. And uh, of course, I would like also to thank uh, the Paris Unicef Center for giving us this unique opportunity. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you very <laughs> so, much for inviting me. <laughs> thank you. Uh, for the first question, so for the first question, uh, I would like to talk a bit about uh, news. Uh, so we are currently facing a major crisis with the COVID, uh, one which led to a rise in inequalities. Uh, this, this crisis alters the analysis you previously made uh, on capitalism and changed the solution you offered to lower po poverty. Uh, yes, uh, COVID-19 has revealed all the um, negative aspects of the economic system that we have uh, in a very sharp way. It made it very vivid, very visual. Uh, one of the things which made it very visual is how um, uh, poor people hang on their nails for survival. As soon as the COVID-19 started spreading, they started falling down. So millions and millions of poor people have been pushed downwards, still further down in income level and so on. They lost their income, they lost their livelihood, they lost their food. Their life become extremely miserable during this pandemic and it continues to do so. At the same time, the people who make billions of dollars, who are uh, owners of uh, all the wealth of the world at the top uh, in the income level, their wealth has increased by $11 trillion, same period. 
well, massive number of people losing income and uh, jobs and livelihood. Uh, on the other side, the rich became further richer during this extreme period. So it shows how this machine, the economic machine works. It takes away wealth and puts it in the hands of only few people. So the segregation between people and the wealth continues to expand, continues to widen. Uh, so this is not the only wealth concentration machine, the economic system that we have, it's a wealth concentration machine. It's also uh, global uh, climate changing machine. Uh, it makes life, uh, the global warming uh, increase in a faster way that uh, it's been doing right now. We are very close to uh, 1.2 degrees Celsius already. And within the 10 years, we'll be reaching 1.5 degrees Celsius. So this is also the machine is pushing us that way. So everything is happening in that period. You mentioned about uh, reducing poverty. I don't talk about reducing poverty. Um, that's a very uh, kind of slippery word, reducing poverty. I said uh, ending poverty was a very clear word. I said poverty should be in the museum not in the life of the people, because this is not the people who are responsible. It is the system which is responsible. If we change the system, there is no reason why anybody should remain as a poor person. So we can aim at reducing, not reducing poverty, but ending poverty once for all. It's a, and then we create the museums which will show what poverty used to be like. That's the direction we should be moving. Um, okay, thanks for your answer. Uh, and uh, with the distribution of vaccine against COVID, inequalities uh, reveal them th themselves between uh, countries. So you express the wish that vaccine against COVID uh, should be a global common good. So could you, uh, what do you mean by this expression? And don't you think that uh, removing patents on this vaccine would sh slow down innovation uh, as uh, pharmaceutical companies uh, won't, wouldn't benefit as much as they used to from their research? Yeah. Uh, by common good, meaning that it has no exclusive right for anybody. Everybody owns it. That's a common good. Uh, air is a common good. You don't own the air. You can't keep the air to yourself. I own it, you own it, everybody owns it there. Uh, so similarly, vaccine should be a common good. It should not be owned by anybody. It should be available to everybody. Uh, and that's what we are campaigning uh, by the middle of uh, 2020. When the vaccine comes, it should be made a common good. Nobody should own, there should not be any commercial ownership of the vaccine. So the companies are, in, individuals cannot own that vaccine. Uh, but still, that has not happened. Uh, we can, and you mentioned that uh, uh, about the ownership uh, issue. Uh, it's actually the knowledge, the knowledge how to protect people from uh, COVID 19. Vaccine symbolizes the knowledge. We, now we have the knowledge to protect people by giving the vaccine. But that knowledge is kept under lock and key by the owners. It's not shared by people, shared by other people. So world has the knowledge, but the knowledge is not available to everybody. So that's where our campaign, so the knowledge became a prisoner of the profit making. So there's a profit wall behind which knowledge is kept. We said, break that wall, make this knowledge available so that everybody in the world can be protected, not just the lucky ones. Today, because of the pen, uh, patent right or intellectual property right, as they call it, legal term, intellectual property right, only 10 countries in the world got the benefit of the vaccine. 80% of the total production of vaccine 
went to only 10 lucky countries. And the rest of the world has to deal with the 20% of the vaccines. There are 20 poor countries in the world where not a single dose of vaccine has ever reached, not a single dose. In Africa continent, only 5% of the people could be vaccinated. So what happened to them? They were open to attack of the COVID-19. So this is where uh, our campaign was, still is, that it should be made a common good. There should not be any commercial ownership so that any country can produce it. Once you take away the property right, then many, many countries can produce it and then make it available to people. You said if you take out the patent right, then the incentive for the companies will disappear. This is your fear. Yes, this is one way to look at it, but you have to also find out who designed this vaccine. How did, how did you uh, come up with this uh, uh, formula, the recipe for the vaccine? Not the companies. It's the universities who created it. In most of the time it's the universities or research institutions funded by the governments not the company. You see, if, if it is say 50-50, 50% of the money for the research for the vaccine came from the government, it's much more than 50%. In the USA, it's almost uh, uh, nearer to 80%, 90% of the cost borne by the, uh, borne by the uh, uh, government. Uh, so even if it's 50-50, suppose 50% of the money for the research came from the government, 50% say from the pharmaceutical companies, then shouldn't the government be receiving the half the profit they earn? Then there's no shortage of money. Government will have plenty of money for further research and so on, even if the companies don't do that. So our aim would be, would be strengthening the research capacities of the universities, lab facilities of the universities, research institutions, so that they can produce more and more of these vaccines now the vaccine, which is already in operation, uh, need to be uh, redesigned because of the new uh, varieties of um, uh, COVID-19 coming up, the Delta variety and other varieties coming up. So we need to improve those vaccines. We go back to the laboratories. And then you said, if they don't have the money, they will not be interested to produce it uh, or uh, finance it uh, to, for the uh, promotion or for the discovery of the recipe. See, I keep saying that money is an incentive. That's how you said that. You would not, would not be, I said money is a happiness, it may be a happiness, but making other people happy is a super happiness. If I can produce a vaccine which will save the life of the people, it will be super incentive for me. So why always money has to be the incentive? This is a misconception that money is the incentive. Many of the people who in the past designed in, uh, vaccines, they didn't want one single penny out of it. Like uh, uh, vaccines, that polio vaccine. Polio vaccine, is, uh, he, is, uh, he is Jonas Salk. He said, I don't want any penny. I don't want to own anything. I want to save people's life. He didn't take any money. He didn't ask for government to pay him or anybody to pay him. He says it's a public property. You go ahead and produce as much as you can. That's why polio is disappeared, almost disappeared from this planet because of the vaccine. So money is not always incentive. Your assumption is money is the incentive, so you have to put the money. Saving life is a tremendous incentive that uh, my company has saved millions of these lives. That's a fantastic thing to happen. And I own the share of a company uh, which has saved people's lives. That's a fantastic incentive. So we should be encouraging that incentive, not money-making incentive. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your answer. I have a second question. Uh, you got the Nobel Peace Prize in 2006 uh, for being the pioneer of microcredit. Uh, and you have now developed quite a lot the concept of social business. How did you widen your activity from microcredit to social business? Uh, looking back, it was just a, a, a logical process. It was not something 
Uh, now I've done my cricket, let's do social business. It's not like that. Looking back, you can see microcredit started and still remains as a social business. So microcredit was a social business. Uh, simply, we didn't give it a name yet. We needed to give a name when people start challenging the kind of business that we are having. Uh, so what we did when we did the microcredit, we see many other problems of the people's life. Uh, particularly if you are a woman, if you are poor, you have all the health problems around you and your children's health problem, your own health problem. So we tried to see if we can help them like we did in giving them the money to make some money to live their life. Can we do something for their health, for their children's health? So we became interested in health programs. Uh, we created a toilet program. There was no toilet in the village. So we said, let's try to bring toilet to the, every family. No family had toilet. So we wanted to have, every family should have a toilet. So this is our first thing. So we created a company to produce toilet in the village and give the borrowers of Grameen Bank a toilet loan. You can borrow the money to buy a toilet and pay the company to deliver the toilet. And then pay the toilet uh, loan over a long period of time so that it doesn't weigh heavy on you. It's very easy to wear that. And that toilet became very popular item in the country. So we created a toilet company. We created the healthcare system. We create, bring out healthcare insurance. We created the uh, uh, solar energy company. So many companies created, but when you start explaining what these companies are, we said these are companies to solve problems, not making money for us. People say, ah, oh, you're making lots of money. I said, no, I don't make any money because I wanted to create this company to solve people's problem. That's what we did. Then we had a controversy. Can you create a company not to make money? I said, why not? Is there any law against it that I don't want to take profit out of it? So that controversy, I thought it will be easy for me to argue when I put a name to it. Then I put a name to it, social business. It's a non-dividend company to solve human problems. So the name came much later. And Grameen Bank, even today we said microcredit, real microcredit is a social business microcredit. And it's not a money-making microcredit. We say money-making microcredit is a wrong microcredit. There's a right microcredit and a wrong microcredit. And social business microcredit is the right kind of microcredit. The domain bank is a social business. So the social business is a natural exposition of what we have been doing. Now that idea has spread in many different directions. Thank you. Um, in response to capitalism being intrinsically unequal and restraining the full realization of one's individual potential, um, you have developed the concept of social business as previously mentioned. And can it be extended to the environmental issues uh, and how to link social business uh, to the protection of the environment? Uh, I was, as I was explaining, I said we define social business as a business to solve problems. We didn't say what kind of problems. It's solve all kinds of problems, all social problems, economic problems, environmental problems, all problems. Whenever you face a problem, you try to come up with a business idea to solve the problem without any intention of making money. That's the key. You don't want to make money. You want to solve the problem. So now you said, can you solve the environmental problem? Of course, it's a problem. Now you design a business to solve the problem. Uh, you design which kind of problem you want to solve within the environment. For example, I was giving in my answer to the previous question that we created an energy company, solar energy company, uh, to bring renewable energy, solar energy in the villages of Bangladesh. That's an environmental company. We are addressing uh, the problem of uh, fossil fuel versus renewable energy. So we are replacing fossil fuel energy by renewable energy. So that's the problem. And then we created uh, other uh, such attempt, uh, bring biodigester. 
to take the waste of the uh, village and create energy out of it. Again, something uh, the energy related issue, energy creation and so on. Uh, and then uh, we created the uh, uh, energy saving uh, cook, cooking stoves, cooking stove which doesn't take too much of energy so that uh, you can use small amount of your fuel and then you have lots of energy out of it. These are all energy related thing. You did all we did in a natural way, step by step, we continue to do that. We created water company to bring drinking water. Uh, that's also energy related, uh, uh, environment related company. Finally, we created a whole new company called Yunus Environment Hub. Now in Yunus Environment Hub is, uh, sol uh, is addressing the problem of the environment in many different countries. So it's a, it's a uh, social business can be applied in any direction that you want to take it to. As long as you want to, so want to solve the problem, come up with a social business solution. You come up with a creative idea uh, to address the problem, not to make money for yourself. That's the whole thing about the social business. That it? Okay. All right. Perfect. Great. Thank you very much. Um, oh, I have a third question. Uh, so you mentioned in your last book that uh, you want to reach, and we all, I think, want to reach uh, a, a goal of a world with three zeros, zero in employment, right. zero poverty, and zero carbon emissions. So we have right. a question. Like, in your opinion, uh, is the shift taken by finance with benefit corporation and sustainability goals really impactful to reach this goal or another form of greenwashing, uh, according to you? You see, profit maximizing has derailed us from all social objectives. All we see is to make money. We start uh, addicted to profit making. And everybody noticed it. It's not new that I'm noticing it and you're noticing it now. For over years, people objected to it. People felt uncomfortable about it. People see how bad it is taking us in a new di di direction that is not good for people. So they make attempts. All these company formation that you benefit companies other is an attempt to see if you can get away from the profit maximizing companies and so on. So I would, I would say these are very positive things. Uh, but along the way, uh, people saw that uh, businesses saw that uh, people admire when you do something uh, which is, shows that you are uh, uh, friendly to social issues, you want to solve social issues, you want to solve environmental issues. So they started using this as a, a kind of uh, media promotion. Not really they want it, but they want you to make believe that they're friendly to the environment and give you some uh, example of doing this. Oh, look at my thing. It's a, this is environment friendly. We are not using any plastic in these things and so on and so forth. Actually, they are damaging the environment in right and left way, but they just show one, one little thing that they have done and say, ah, look how environment friendly we are. That's called greenwashing. You don't change anything in your company. You want to make money for yourself, but you deceive people by giving promotional things and so on. Uh, while these are bad things, but we should not forget there are genuine attempts like uh, benefit companies and so on uh, who want to do things in a way that uh, will be, uh, not derail them because of money-making uh, uh, objective of the company and so on. So uh, we should be careful. Some are bad, uh, the greenwashing and deceiving people. Some are genuine attempt. Uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, from finance to activism, uh, what is the best way for the youth to get involved in societal and environmental issues? Uh, you mentioned that about three zero, this should be one that young people can uh, get involved with because it's the young people who can create the world that is uh, uh, to protect the world today, 
uh, when it is under attack by the global warming and all the bad things we are doing to the planet. So how to make that happen? Uh, young people had to stand firm and say, this, we are not going to destroy, allow this planet to be destroyed. This is our planet, this is our home. We want to protect it. Uh, I tried to explain to young people by saying, if you think this uh, planet as a kind of spaceship, uh, we are floating in the space, we are, going, uh, we are here, uh, but I, I try to tell the young people that look, in this spaceship, don't feel that you are a passenger on this spaceship. Feel you are the pilot of this spaceship because that's what you are. You are the pilot and you are the navigators of this spaceship. And navigate this spaceship to the destination that you want to reach and have the flight plan because it's your responsibility to create flight plan. Other people are just enjoying themselves because they feel that they are, they, they are, they are the passengers of this uh, uh, spaceship. I said, that's why the spaceship is now going in the wrong direction and it will crash itself, it will destroy itself because nobody's flying it, nobody's in the pilot set. So you become the pilot and then uh, create that uh, uh, flight plan. I said, one way to make that flight plan would be uh, to take it to the world of three zeros. You create the world of three zeros, zero net carbon emission and zero wealth concentration and zero unemployment. And that's the direction that you want to go and make sure you do that. Uh, so as a pilot, as a navigator, uh, you should be taking this planet in that direction to have a life, uh, have the safe planet, an enjoyable planet, a planet which will be shared by everybody, not uh, uh, grabbed grab by a group, group of people and uh, deprive everybody else. And this is the objective uh, of the young people that they can show. And to encourage that, we are in, uh, promoting the idea of three zero club, uh, asking the young people to form three zero club. Uh, five young people can get together and form a three zero club. And this, uh, then you try to prepare yourself how to become the pilot of this uh, uh, planet and how to prepare the flight plan so that you can take the fly, uh, plane to the right directions and so on. And in, in the meantime, you start working for that. It's not something, okay, someday when I grow up, it's not like that. As you grow up, you prepare yourself, think what is wrong with the planet right now? Why global warming is happening? How to stop this global warming? Why the wealth concentration is happening? How can I make sure the wealth concentration doesn't happen? How does the unemployment is created? How can I stop the unemployment? What the artificial intelligence, what is it, how is it taking away our future? How to stop uh, artificial intelligence to uh, make us into uh, garbage on this planet? We don't want to become garbage in this planet. So as a young person, you can start thinking and working together. And we encourage these three zero clubs of young people to network with each other. You are in France, you find another three zero club in other part of the France or in the other parts of the Europe or in Asia or in Latin America, connect yourself. The whole world belongs to you. You're the young generation. You have to take this planet in the right direction, right way. Otherwise you don't have a future. So you take the responsibility, feel that we are the pilots. We are going to, we are going to make it sure that this planet doesn't end up in the crash. Today, a uh, human being has become most endangered species on this planet. We don't want to make it an endangered species. We want to make this planet a safe planet, a happy planet, and a very uh, comfortable planet for everybody. So that's the direction that we want to go. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sadat, for your intervention and for sharing. Thank you views on the, the way to develop a, a better world uh, with us. Um, 
and maybe uh, Jean-Luc, uh, do you want to say something about the treaty rule clubs? Yeah, well, it's up to Professor Yunus. It's the best place because it's uh, his own initiative. He launched this initiative last June in the context of a social business day, as you know. And of course, we expect to, to, to pursue the discussion with each of you and your uh, fellow, stu fellow students of ESCP and ESSEC to see how uh, dozens of uh, uh, free zone clubs could be created. It's very simple. It's not a legal entity, the club. It's a very simple thing to do just five people all together with a, a key person who will uh, be the uh, take responsibility in leading the, the club and then uh, this platform uh, which has been designed in bangladesh in order to connect all these clubs all together to make uh, this net network uh, as life as life uh, as possible with a lot of exchanges of best practices and best projects so yeah, well, we're very happy that you are interested by, by this initiative. We are very much uh, uh, happy to see that uh, students in the best uh, or the most reputed business schools in France uh, feel themselves very much engaged in this free zero future described by Professor Yunus. And we are uh, there in Paris to help you uh, to identify the what kind of problems you want to solve, how, what kind of action plan you want to develop and to uh, support you in this effort. But it will be your effort. It will be your initiative. You will decide by yourself what we want to do. So I just make a call to everybody attending this conference and all your friends who will, uh, who will attend this interview in the coming days, well, to come to us and to see how concretely uh, more business, uh, more free zero clubs could be created. And right now, I just thank Professor Yunus once again for uh, his oh, very you. and uh, his very nice and kind uh, interview. So thank you very much, Professor. Thank you. Can I can I just mention that in our Please. chat box, if you look at the chat chat box, you have the links to the three zero clubs, so that if you want to find out what this three zero club is all about, you can look at that. So check your chat box. Well, thank you for uh, having me with you. It's wonderful to have occasionally meet you and talk to you about what's going on. It's a very important time right now, this year and next year. Uh, world's fate, world's future will be decided what we do now, this year, next year, or during this decade. After this, it will be sealed. No matter what we try, we cannot change anything because we will be in a path which is irreversible. And that's the most dangerous way to do that. So while we have the opportunity, let's make a decision to make sure we keep the planet safe and take it away from its self-destruction the way we are doing right now. Right now. Well, thank you very much, uh, Jean-Luc, and thank you, all the students. Uh, hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Have Bye -bye. a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.